Hello, animation fans, and welcome to another iAnimate podcast. I'm your host, Larry Vasquez, and you're listening to episode 87. In this episode, we have Justin Ross joining us. Uh, Justin is an animator over at Blizzard Entertainment. Uh, He's been here for about the last seven years and has got to work on some really, really cool IPs there for them. Um, Shadowland, Overwatch, Hearthstone, and uh, he has an extensive background. He's been in the industry for about 25, I think he said, years, and uh, has an extensive background in stop motion, and that was just a really cool opportunity to talk with him about that. Um, Kind of... You know what it's like to work in there how that relates to cg and and such he's worked on such films as uh, kubo and uh, paranorman while he was at uh, Leica. Um, just a really cool guy fun topic to talk about definitely check out this podcast all righty well we'll jump into it um Justin, I'm sure our guests get tired of me of hearing me say this, but I genuinely mean it. I always appreciate your guys' time. Um, it's a neat opportunity to get people like you in uh, to talk with animation, this this industry and field that we love. So I do appreciate your time and taking it, as you mentioned, a little under the weather. So uh, yeah. uh, it's it's neat to have you in on this. So thank you very much. Yeah, my honor, man. My honor. Very cool. Um, one of the things I love about talking with people is I always like kind of hearing, you know, here we are in this animation realm but everyone kind of seems to get there by different paths. And, uh, you know, so I just kind of like to always get a background first. How did you get into animation? Um, you've got a really cool background, both with um, CG and stop motion and stuff. So what made you want to get into animation? How long you've been doing it? Um, 25 years. I've cool. been All animating right. professionally. Uh, I've been an artist my whole life. <clears throat> so I, I started with pencil like everybody does. Mm. Uh comic books, animation, creature features on the weekends, <laughs> uh, you know, D- Disney films, like, uh, you know, all through the mid seventies to the, you know, all through the eighties to the nineties, everything. Mm-hmm. Like, so it was all 2d animation as far as, uh, initial idea of what animation was. It was so specifically mysterious, uh, back then because you didn't have, uh, the internet. You didn't have right, a right. way to find out where animation came from. And I, I grew up in Florida in a really small town uh, in my early years. And there was a thing called cable that came out. <laughs> and in cable, there was somebody that had a Disney channel. And I remember I was at a friend's house that had cable because we didn't have cable. And the Disney channel played and they showed, you know, Walt Disney showing some of the animators flipping paper. Oh, very cool. Okay. And I was like, holy crap. That's how they do that? Uh. That's a thing? You know? (laughs) And of course, all little kids watch animation. So you know it's a job, but you don't know it's a job. Yeah. Like, it's it's really nondescript. And then so that inspiration and first nugget, you know, I was five years old when I I remember seeing that, showed me that sequential drawings could become living things, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, and then I was a huge creature feature, science fiction, monster movie guy. And uh, I would watch the creature features every week. And I loved special effects like creature suits and miniatures mm. and, you know, tricks of photography, anything. Uh, and, you know, and eventually you're going to come across stop motion. Uh no, even less of an idea where that came from <laughs> uh, because it was so niche and there was only just a tiny few people in the world that did it. Right, right. You know? So uh, Fangoria magazine came out uh, and I was at Walden Books, a, a bookstore that doesn't really exist anymore. <laughs> and it was this crazy grotesque magazine that had special effects on it. And it felt really freaky when you'd read it like, like you're reading like something naughty, (laughs) but you would look in there and you would see how they made creatures and masks. Uh, And there was books and like little things you could order. And there was a picture of Ray Harryhausen and there was Willis O'Brien next to King Kong. And you see that it's a miniature and you're like, Oh wow. That's how they do that. That's the magic trick, huh? Yeah. And then you would get little tiny articles here and there about stop motion or a a matte painting or something that went into how they did a lot of the photography for films like Star Wars Mm -hmm. or, uh, you know, all the stuff that inspired us through the eighties growing up. So when I graduate, when I was going 
into making a decision what I wanted to do in the world. I was aiming to be a special effects artist okay. with a 2D background and I wanted to learn animation. Uh, so I ended up going to art school and uh, <clears throat> I went to a place called Art Institute of Pittsburgh where they had a, one of the only special effects programs in Pen- and it happened to be in Pennsylvania because there's a lot of you know, uh, guys that did monster stuff like Tom <laughs> Savini and like, you know, the zombie revolution, like uh, all, some of them were teachers there. And, uh, and I was like, oh my God, I have to do that. So I went to school with my brother to learn special effects and 2D animation. A movie came out called Jurassic Park while I was there. <laughs> and I was like, holy cow, that <laughs> is incredible. And I have never seen anything that uh, stunning on, mm-hmm. on film as far as the special effects. <clears throat> and they had a computer animation program. Up so in P- I, uh, Pittsburgh, where you were at? Yes. Yeah. Uh-huh. They had like two SGIs, like one of the <laughs> first ones. And, uh, and they taught 3D studio uh, three or four at okay. the time, way back. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, and, so I switched over to computer animation right there the next morning after mm. I saw Jurassic Park. And I began to learn some of the technical sides of things. And granted, I was still doing nothing but 2D animation till like the last two quarters of my education. But at that point, I learned how to use uh, a 3D program. And it kind of, you know, I don't know what it was. I was right on the cusp of, of being able to technically handle these new programs Mm -hmm. but also be an artist gotcha and it was right on the edge of where most people doing it were like computer science majors and like computer geeks that weren't really artists yeah yeah and i just rode that wave very cool right in and uh and got into the industry through that now it's kind of funny when you talk about you know 2d animation and then stop motion and then 3d comes it's kind of like that merge of the two there where you're you're you have this virtual puppet and that's oftentimes when i explain to people you know uh what rigging is i said you know have you seen stop motion they're like yeah i'm like well it's kind of that same idea you have to be able to make it articulate if you have just a clay figure you can't animate that so it's that's kind of funny that you kind of merge those two when that uh kind of came out there yeah and you know it was really fascinating because uh, I remember I was telling my wife about this the other day, you know, there t- it, there's so many parts that go into making a film, right? Mm-hmm. You have to light, uh, write, storyboard, model, texture, yep. paint, you know, all the things that go into real, real movie making. And all of a sudden I could do it all on a box. <laughs> and I remember being kind of blown away by it. I'm like, I do my own cameras. I do my own animation. I model my own. I, I felt like I was given the key to make movies uh-huh. <laughs> for, for the whole world. Right. And I was That's like, cool. Oh my God. It, it just took to my soul. I was like, I can tell stories and make films with this tool, this box, uh-huh. you know what I mean? And it yeah. really it blew me away. Now what, um, Okay. I don't want to jump too far ahead. So yeah. what were some of you mentioned that you kind of got out from there? What were some of your first gigs? My very first job, uh, so this is another like right on the cusp. You don't know what you're going to do as a young student. And <clears throat> I graduated and I had a really good demo reel for the time. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I got courted by a lot of studios because, uh, you know, having a talented artist that knew CG was pretty, you know, special. At yeah, the yeah. Time. So, uh, so I got flown around all over the United States for jobs. I got taken out for interviews and I, um, I ended up having to choose because I had a situation where I could work in 2d or I could work in CG. And, uh, I was really excited about working in 2d because that's like what you come up thinking you're going to yeah, do. Yeah. Right. And then, um, but then the, a bunch of CG companies were video game studios mm. And I never thought I would work in games. That was the last thing I thought I would do when I was at art school. I'm like, video games? But I grew up playing video games all through the (laughs) 80s. And there was a Japanese video game company called Konami. And they made me an offer that was really good, way better than any other offer I had, you know, working in 2D or most other studios, you know. Uh, I also was a single parent at the time. So I, I really needed 
a good job that paid bills and I didn't have to think like there was contract work here and there. Uh, this lasts for six months, this lasts for a year, whatever. Right. And they were just like, come here, we'll put you up in our Konami housing. You'll make this much money. You have insurance, blah, 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 everything. And I was like, I got to do it. So I guess I'm going to work for Konami. <laughs> so was that here in the U.S.? No. Uh, yes, that was oh, in Chicago. So, okay. So they had a, a U.S. base. They had. So for anyone who doesn't know, Chicago used to be the king of arcades, mm. right? Like all arcade coin-op games in America were made in Chicago. Gotcha. So Capcom, yeah. uh, Konami, Midway, blah, blah, blah. You name it. They were all there. Kind of like a Noah's Arcade from <laughs> Wayne's World, if anyone knows that movie, right? And uh, so I didn't know this till I went to work there. So they had an arcade division and then they had the console division uh. Uh, in Chicago. So they made sports games. They made some fantasy games. Uh, um, Castlevania was uh, yeah. the last 2D game that was going to be coming out. Uh, and then I just kind of jumped into this world and, uh, and started making CG stuff for their video games. So what um, game was it and what, for co what console? So the very first game that I worked on was called Survivor Day One. And it was for the Nintendo 64. Okay. And uh, it was a, a brand new system, the Nintendo 64 that was going to come out. And everyone, we were still on PlayStation 1 doing okay. games. But that one, we were prepping for the next generation of consoles. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so that, there were some sports titles. There was a Castlevania game in CG that got canceled. There was a bunch of stuff that we worked on over the years there. So how long were you there at uh, Konami? About two and a half years. Okay. And then gotcha. uh, I, you know... Chicago was not where I wanted to live. I wanted to be in California. So I was in, in Chicago for about six months. And then Konami said, hey, we're opening the San Francisco division. Okay. Does anyone want to go? And I'm like, <laughs> right here. And they shipped a bunch of us, my whole team, in fact, to San Francisco. Cisco. Okay. Uh, and so it got me a little closer to Hollywood, right? <laughs> and uh, so... I worked there for about two and a half years total. And then I came down to LA after that. Okay. Um, any, you know, obviously being your first gig, was there anything that were kind of those light bulbs, uh, you know, at Konami that you were picking up on? Well, you know, it was such a different world for all of you young animators. Again, uh, I was hired as an artist, a okay. 3D artist, not an animator, which is what I specialize in. Uh, back then I would, do concept art. I would model. Uh -huh. I would do environments. I would do level design. We were wow. designers. We did everything. You'd gotcha. be on a small team, maybe nine people back then to do all, an entire game. And uh, so it was a small group of artists and a small group of programmers. That sounds and, like a lot of fun though. Oh yeah, dude. It was so fun. Cause like you as a kid, right? Like you're like, I'm going to make a video game. Right? So <laughs> it's this character and he's going to jump this high and he's going to do this weapon and, yeah. blah, 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 and he's going to fight this monster. It's total kid stuff. Like yeah. exactly what you would imagine making video games would be like. And the collaboration process too. Yes. That's one of the things I've really, really appreciated uh, being more in that type of environment, how much uh, something develops through that collaboration yeah. process. So I could see where you're kind of with the small team and developing different aspects, you know, all over the place that you'd come up with some cool concepts. Yeah. And, and it was, it was just, it just, it was like a group of friends, right? Yeah. So fun. <laughs> and you, you know, like I, I, I happen to be an animator and good at animation. Mm -hmm. So animation kept coming at me. Right. And then it kept, give it to Justin, right. He'll animate it. Give it to blah, blah, blah. And then from that point forward, I started funneling more and more into animation uh, because I had an animated background. Gotcha. Uh, but I, I, you know, it wasn't too much longer, maybe one more game project, maybe a couple more years. And then it was nothing but animation. That's all I did. Okay. So now you went down to LA, you said? Yes. And that was at where? Uh, Activision. So there okay. was a, a studio there uh, that was originally called Luxoflux. And it was a, a, a video game company started by a couple of uh, European guys that came out here and did the whole big American dream thing. Started a company, did really well, sold it, had a hit game. Uh, Activision bought them. And then so we all became Activision. Okay. 
And uh, so then I started making a lot of uh, licensed titles for them for a while. Um, like because what? they had DreamWorks license, like Shrek 2. Gotcha. Okay. Kung, there's like Kung Fu Panda and like anything from their libraries of licenses, be it Marvel back then or, or DreamWorks or whatever they were licensing. They were Transformers. They would make games. Okay. It. And uh, so they would farm those out to the small companies that they had ended up accumulating Quiet. over the okay. years. Yeah. Gotcha. Any fun ones that were kind of stick out? Oh yeah. I mean, they were all fun. I loved, uh, I loved working at Shrek too. I loved working on, let's see. Uh, I got to do a bunch of cinematics for, for Vigilante 8, which was their original title that, okay. that, that they made. Uh, they also made another original title called True Crime streets of LA and streets of New York. Okay. And that was like, their big thing was that they literally took maps of LA and they made it in the computer <laughs> so you could drive to your house in the video <laughs> game and cause havoc. <laughs> and uh, so like, you know, I, I was a, a hand keyed animator and that was a motion captured game, but I got to do motion capture for it because I had a big uh, movement background. So I got to do, and that kind of opened this whole big career of, of doing mocap stuff as well. Okay. Gotcha. Yeah. So now you're currently at Blizzard, right? Yeah. Was that from Activision or how did that work? No, I, I bounced all over the place. Like I, I, I did Activision probably there for about seven years after Konami. Okay. And then I, I got, I went to work for Sony for a little bit and decided to, I got uh, up, I went up to Leica where I did some stop motion mm. feature films. Yes, I saw that you did work on Kubo. Yeah, and you know, Paranorman, I worked on a couple of their films and a few other beyond that too. So yeah, I, I had been doing stop motion, which was lots of opportunities. So I could jump in and out of stop motion here and there, okay. work on some television shows, work on a feature, uh, and then come back to video games or whatever I want to do later. Gotcha. Okay. So that was kind of my, uh, was rattling in my mind here. You mentioned that, you know, at that school in Pittsburgh, yeah. uh, you did computer animation and yep. you had your 2D. So yep. how did you get into stop motion then? Pure frustration. <laughs> this is how I got into it. I had been doing uh, CG animation for 10 years at that point. Okay. And uh, I love CG, but I miss touching my art. Okay. Feeling my artwork. And, and you know, it, it all got triggered by my grandma. She came over to my house. She's like, Justin, show me your art, right? And I'm like, I, I got to go to like load up a PlayStation and go to level <laughs> 10 and fight the boss. <laughs> she, she doesn't get that, uh -huh. you know? And like... Um, everything was on the computer and it was like old codecs that didn't work anymore. Uh, okay. or, and I was like, ah, you know, I had been, I make short films for fun, just uh -huh. something I do every couple of years. I make short films. And I was like, my next short film I'm going to make in stop motion because I want to feel my physical artwork again. And I started experimenting with it. And because I was trained in 2d and trained in CG, it was relatively quick that I was able to apply the craft to that medium. Okay. So I was doing pretty good work really fast. And I was only working in it for a few years before I got the offer to work at Leica. Man. And, uh, and it was, you know, mind blowing. Uh, but it was, I, I fell in love, dude. Like the way you love, you know, something, your child is how I love animation and stop motion specifically. Gotcha. Uh, it's, Freaking magic. <laughs> no, I, I, there's a couple guys, you and I forget one of the other guys that, um, is it the guy that does a lot of, uh, they kind of little magic tricks and stuff online. Kevin he, Perry. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, so he yeah. did a lot. He does a lot of that kind of stuff that he would show the behind the scenes. Yeah. That word magic. That's about, that's about the best you can describe it. It, it is just remarkable. The closest thing to magic. Yeah. That yeah. exists. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It, I, I get high <laughs> as a kite. It worked. It worked. When, when I see a piece of animation that feels alive. Yeah. Yeah. That I created. Oh my God. It takes my breath away. That is it cool. It takes my breath away. And it goes right back to being that little five-year-old watching creature features <laughs> and being like, and dude, 
I never knew that I could get there. It did uh, not seem like a thing that existed. Gotcha. Like, how do I get from here to there to making movies in stop motion? It, it's such a an amazing miracle that it's here and bigger than ever now. Yeah. Out of control. And then now I get to do it, you know, it's, it's incredible. That's amazing. It. Okay. I do have a question on this and this is yeah. the kind of peeling back a little bit behind the curtain. Sure. Um, with CG, you've got the ability to tweak, you know, and control Z very easily. Right. Um, how does that work for you as you, I mean, your approach, are you straight ahead or you you've planned it out as well? So I guess give us kind of, um, the similarities and differences as you approach stop motion versus CG. So pros and cons, dude, CG is amazing because you can polish till the cows come. Right. Home, right. Right. You can make it look perfect <laughs> as perfect as you possibly can stop motion. You can make it look as perfect as you have time for, <laughs> or maybe as perfect as it can be. Right. Uh, uh but that's the charm of it. I will be on a shot at Blizzard for three weeks. One shot, right? I'll be uh, on the same length of a shot. Maybe I'll be on it for a week in stop motion. And then it's done. It's done and it's done forever. And if there's errors, that's it. It's literally stream of consciousness. It's, it's your blood in and on film forever that's cool and uh so it's very high wire right you're up there you know whoa, whoa. like <laughs> you, you can fall to your death and it's high stakes uh-huh but man it's so rewarding because when it's done it's done right so it's a different kind of feeling right it's like okay. that's it is what it is yeah that's the best i could do at that moment and uh in feature it's a little different because in feature you rehearse uh you do a block yeah it's yeah. always straight ahead no matter what just so you know always straight ahead but you block you show the director the director gives you notes how to improve this pose change that timing i don't like that do something else then you rehearse you shoot it on twos the whole thing so you get a pretty good visual of what it looks like get notes change this change that timing fix push this pose pull that one back then it's all high wire. You're 24 frames per second, start to finish. Don't screw it up. Uh, that's feature. But feature is the only place you get to do that because they have enough money to allow you to go through the process three times, basically, to get the best shot you can. So on that third time, are you reanimating it from soft to start to finish? Start to finish three times. Oh, my goodness. Three times. Start to finish. And I mean, your, your block, of course, is lower frame rate, right? You're yeah, doing yeah. your poses. Yeah. You're doing your timing. The rehearse is, and, and here's the thing. You'll never do it the same. I, I know. I can imagine. It will, that puppet will never go back to the same place you told it to go last time <laughs> because it's moving and yeah. it's breathing and it's alive and, uh, and arcs. You're working on arcs, right? That lean might be just a tad off from the last lean you did. Oh and the arc is a new arc. And the timing, you know, you hope to preserve timing. That's the biggest save you can get from, you know, of information when you're moving to the next stage. Yeah, yeah. But really the, the nuts and bolts of like good posing, <coughs> timing, spacing, that has to be in the flow as you go. Ha okay. Um, it would seem to me that because of the stop motion and the nature of it being straight ahead, you have to have a bank of how quick something has to move within that, you know, 24 frames or a slow, your ease in and your ease out. Does that, how does that, how is that translated into CG for you? Are you a quick artist or are you? Yeah. Uh, okay. That's what I, I, I think. I think one thing I'm pretty quick. Pretty fast. On average. I would imagine. I think uh, I give information like my blocks are very clear. Okay. I make sure all my breakdowns are very clear how I'm transitioning from this pose to that pose. I make sure I key in my eases and my eases out okay. to make sure I know this is a key. This is 
That's the spacing there. Mm -hmm. Boom. Here's a breakdown. Boom. Here's an extreme. I, I'm really clear about my keys and my blocks. Um, I work not very much in the graph editor. I, I'm 25 years. I don't spend a lot of time in the graph editor. Okay. That's a very yeah. far into the process or problem solving thing where I'll okay. go in and be like, there's something weird, dink, and I'll, I'll fix it. Um, yeah. And I think, you know, I don't do layering very much. I work with the entire character. Okay. Uh, I know that's a part of my stop motion feel is, yeah, yeah. is when I'm posing, I'm not just like working with the hips first and then going back in with the arms later or whatever. I'm like, boom, pose, boom, pose, boom. Very kind of 2D like. Yeah. Yeah. Um, that's what I was going to say. It, it sounds very 2D ish. Yeah. It, okay. I think, I think that is um, the, 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 the other thing is, it's just, I'm, I know working in stop motion because I've been doing that for a long time, 15 years now. Mm -hmm. I feel timing, feel okay. it in my bones. And I, I think of things as hang time and zips, mm -hmm. hang time and zips, more frames here, less frames there. Uh, just because I have to think that way before I start a shot. Yeah. Yeah. I'm like, I just can't go in and, and, you know, You'll get things like a lot of beginner stop motion animators. They might do clean work, but everything's moving floaty. Even. Or, yeah, and, and the arcs are clean, but there's no energy or spacing to mm. what they do. So it's like uh, <clears throat> that's something I definitely bring over from stop motion. I can imagine. Okay, yeah, that would make total sense. Yeah, that's too funny. I, I it is. It's magic. So <laughs> it's pretty cool uh, to get you in on this. Mm. Um, Okay, so you obviously had a, a tremendous skill set to be pulled on over at Leica. What were some of the things that being around other artists that do this uh, as well that you picked up on and that you learned and grew, grew during that time? There's so much because because all of them are different. And Leica is specific. They have a very house style and it's becoming more and more of a house style. Like Coraline was a lot more kind of uh, classically animated where people thought about poses and performance. And then as they moved out of, out of Paranorman and more towards Kubo video reference became, uh, mandatory. Okay. Right. Like they're like, like halfway through Kubo, they're like mandatory reference for everybody. Why was that? Uh, because I think Travis, the director, uh, and owner, really likes that style of animation, which calls naturalistic. Okay. And, uh, and it, maybe it's an easier way to make sure people are on model. Okay. Um, I think it, it just, and you know, in stop motion, <clears throat> you don't, <laughs> it takes a lot of time to get a block up or something visually to see, and he can maybe buy off on reference before you animate to save okay. some time. I think there's a lot of things that go into it. Um, I personally uh, think it's gone too far. That's just my opinion. I got you. As far as like, uh, it's starting to look, you know. Too like much like CG? More than even that. It's okay. starting to look like people wearing puppet suits. Gotcha. Okay. That's what I always call it. So the timing is too human. Okay. The gestures are too subtle. Uh, it, it literally sometimes just looks like, I mean, I hate to say it, but like rotoscopes. Gotcha. Okay. And, and I know better than to say it looks rotoscope because it's impossible to do that right. in a lot of cases, but that is a skill that's being pushed and I don't appreciate it or like it very much. Okay. I, now, I, yeah, sorry. No, no, that's great. I, that's great because one of the things I've noticed on your, um, I think this is a good kind of segue here, particularly for, you know, our listeners who are in CG, because I notice a lot of what you uh, post on your Twitter is a lot of video reference. Yes. So again, yes. when you're saying what you're saying here, it's not yeah. that you're against video reference, it's how yeah. you use it. So can you yeah. kind of go into a little bit on that, on what you're looking for, why you shoot reference and yes. what you're looking for from that? Yeah. So uh, in CG, this is again, very different, right? Uh, <clears throat> at Blizzard, I pretty positive every single animator that I know shoots reference, including me. I shoot reference uh, of my own all the time. Um, depending what show you're on, if you're on like a, a, 
realistic World of Warcraft, like, you know, like VFX style, you know, ILM style show, you're going to want really solid timing and really believable, uh, you know, reference and subtlety in your work. Um, I still think we're dealing with characters that shoulders are out to here. Uh, you have to push that and make it a little heavier mm. and maybe slow down some parts. And of course, you know, we have characters with giant tusks. Yeah. <laughs> so you have, you're, you're adjusting, but the information is really, really valuable. Um, that's one thing where I think a lot of their shows, be it Diablo, which is very realistic. Uh, World of Warcraft pre-rendered is very realistic. Uh, it can come in very useful. And then there's other ones like Overwatch, which are mm -hmm. a lot more extreme and pushed, right? Yeah. So we can play with the timing. We can break joints and we can really whoosh, add a lot of overlap and, and um, you know, secondary action and stuff like that, where that reference can still provide you with good information on posing, you know, timing, weight, but then you exaggerate, which is what we animators are born <laughs> to do. Exaggerate and push it, change, squash the timing, exaggerate the timing. Gotcha. Uh, yeah, like add more overlap, all, all, the, all the fun stuff that animation provides. Uh, so depending what show you're on, it's just super useful as a tool. Um, the only reason I'm dissing, it sounds like I'm dissing Leica about it is because they're not, it feels like they're not exaggerating enough. Right, right, I got you. Uh, yeah. And, and uh, that's kind of the house style. Uh, and like I said, I'll watch Coraline a hundred times a year, as rough as it is, because those imperfections are cool. It, and it reminds charm, you. It reminds you that's a real thing. Yeah. And then when you watch something like, uh, like Missing Link, I'm like, is this real? <laughs> is this a cartoon? I, I mean, is this CG? CG backgrounds, CG side characters. Uh, there's so much going on that it feels like. And then maybe a giant compositing mask color on top of it to blend it all. Mm. And it just starts to feel CG. And yeah, like, yeah. well, why, why would you try to make stop motion, which is all about that, you know, you can do quality work with tiny imperfections and the charm of handmade. You're right. Try to make it, you know, fool the audience, right? That's yeah. what it feels like they're trying to do is fool the audience. Might as well go CG then if that's what you're yeah, going to look yeah, yeah, I got gotcha. you. Yeah. So, so that's the only reason I, I, I get frustrated there. The, the animators are incredibly talented. Right, right. Like, of course. Uh, I just will, you know, would love to see push, exaggeration. Okay. Yeah. Gotcha. No, that's great. Like I said, that was a great segue because yeah. I, you do a lot of um, reference. Mm -hmm. So again, it's not that you're dissing reference. It's just how you use it. No, not at all. Not at all. It's such a great tool. And yeah. And, you know, I used to be a snob, just to let you know. <laughs> I did use reference forever, <laughs> forever. And I, I have a pretty extensive movement background as a human being. Yeah, it looked so, like you did some flips and stuff like that. I noticed yeah, on some of your stuff, yeah. Yeah, I've, I've done stuff my whole life that's, that's physical. And I, have, I had an, an inherent understanding about weight and about... Um, timing and posing just because I felt it in my body. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, so I didn't like using reference. I liked thinking about it, but when I, I remember when I saw that the nine old men used reference when I didn't know that for a long time, like hardcore filmed reference, uh -huh. I was like, what? <laughs> they did that. I'm not cheating. If I use it. Yeah. They're the best magicians ever. Right. Yeah, I was yeah. like, and then I was like, wait a second, maybe I'm being a snob about this, you know? <laughs> and then I also would start to see colleagues that would pick up little subtle things that I could have never imagined. Mm. I just couldn't have imagined it. Yeah. And I'm like, that's cool. I want to be able to tap into that and then combine forces to make something else. Yeah. Know? That's kind of, I, I almost look at reference too, as we kind of talked about earlier as, as that collaboration process. Yeah. I almost kind of think of reference in that same vein as I, I, you know, you shoot reference, you get something on there and it's that that gives you that visual now to start adding in different yeah. things and stuff, you know? Yeah. 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 I'll tell you my process when blocking and using reference, which pretty much only happens when I'm on a feature because 
uh, often I'm not cast for things that people give, get a lot of reference for. And then also uh, in my garage where I do a lot of my private work, uh-huh. I have no time. Okay. I'm just like, go in there, improvise and see what happens. <laughs> and it, I, you know, I'll plan, I'll plan, I'll choreograph, but I won't video ref. Okay. And, uh, but my process is when I use video reference is I go in and I find my keys, I find breakdowns, I get my timing information, make a block, uh-huh. and then I throw it all away. Yep. Yeah. I literally throw it away and I only work with that from now on. And, uh, and then that, what that does is that carries in uh, a more, a more uh, less rotoscoped feel to it. Gotcha. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. You're looking at now as an animator and going, okay, how yeah. can I push this? And yes. yeah. Yep. Yes. And that's the only reason I kind of bring that up is I remember just as a student, you kind of like, you hang on to that reference. You're like, okay, this is my, my map. And you're like, then yeah. it doesn't look like, you know, so, uh, so yeah, it's, and it's here's, very cool. Here's the other thing. One last thing for all you students out there. Reference is awesome, but if you do not exercise your imagination, you will fall flat on your face when you're given a, a, a task that requires it. Mm. Um, and I seen that I have seen that many times. So when I teach, I teach uh, privately stop motion. I of course show the tools of stop motion, but I'm like, look, you're not always going to be working on a show where you can use reference. There's no time. You're on a TV show. Director says, here's the dialogue. Here's my direction. Go. And you have to improvise your way through 10 seconds in a day. So that is a muscle you need to, to develop as well as, as, you know, studying your video reference and stuff like that. Gotcha. No, that's great, man. Very cool. So now what uh, movies did you work on or titles did you work on at Leica? Uh, like it was Paranorman. I came on after Coraline Paranorman. And then I went back to Sony for a movie. So I skipped box trolls and then I came back for Kubo. Okay. Very cool. Yeah. I liked box trolls as well. (laughs) Um, that was a lot of fun. Uh, look, um, Kubo fun story. Uh, uh, you know, you kind of mentioned something about it, it's looks and stuff, but again, some of the action sequences in that and, uh, were just um, really a lot of fun. Thank you. Um, and I saw some of the clips that you posted too. Really yeah. great work. Really great work. Yeah. 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 Um, I, love, if- I love doing that. I, you know, uh, I, I often will get cast, especially in stop motion as an action guy. Okay. Uh, they, they'll, they'll throw me on action pretty much 99% of the time. So <laughs> it's really fun, but I'm like, come on, give me something else. <laughs> um, now you mentioned just your background. What is some of your background? That's kind of uh, that physicality. Uh, I, I, I was a gymnast as a kid, okay. I parkour, I martial arts, mm-hmm. jujitsu, MMA, I, I box even now. Very uh, cool. Yeah, I do. I was a BMX rider, competitive BMX rider wow. all through my, till basically after college. And I had to, I kind of was like, okay, now I'm an animator. I got to pivot here, huh? I skate, I do, uh, you name it. I'm, I, I was a decathlete. I do all kinds of stuff. That's awesome. That's fantastic. Um, and that's just kind of a great, you know, you mentioned just about the physicality. I've talked about this on the podcast before. I've, I've got a wrestling background. My brother, who's an animator, is our uh, division one wrestled and stuff. So, oh, that's awesome. Yeah. So getting that where you're, okay, shift weight here. Yeah. yeah. You, you feel that, you know? 100%. Um, so I know we've talked about this in our pa- podcast before, but it's so good to be active to whatever degree you can, yeah. um, where you can just, you feel that. It just informs your work. Yeah. Uh, you know, like I, me and my wife are both very active. She's a, she was a professional dancer for 20 some years. Mm. And uh, we would take it upon ourselves. Like, okay, let's learn jujitsu. Okay. We're going to go learn swing dancing. Okay. We're going to go learn um, decathlon. Like <laughs> we're going to go to the track. I wanted to pole vault. My, my wife got me a pole for my 30th birthday party. She's like, Justin, here's your pole. You always wanted to pole vault. I guess I'm learning to pole vault. Like, like those little adventures, of course they enrich your life. Completely. Yes. That's it. I'm looking for. Yeah. And, but they also inform your animation and you do not have to be a jock. Like, don't let me get, you don't have to be a, a mover to be an animator. Right. At all. Right. But it absolutely uh, provides a balance to what we do and mm-hmm. also just informs, like I said, it informs, uh, it puts you in your body. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. It's one of the things I tell my students all the time, you know, like, get out of your chair. 
Uh act things out feel them feel them feel where the weight is feel what your body's doing and it and it's just going to help your work yeah killer that's great stuff um so from Leica and kubo is that when you came then to blizzard or did you work on some other stuff you know the the last day of uh kubo was like friday i drove two days back here and monday i started at blizzard so you drove Oregon, right? Or, yeah, yeah. Okay. <clears throat> so, yeah, I like started on Monday at, at Blizzard. I've been there for almost six years. Uh, I have family know, like, up in Oregon. We just literally about a week ago uh, took that trip uh, from Central Valley, uh, yeah. Bakersfield, up to there. A good 11, 12 hours. Yeah, uh, man. Not too bad, but uh, yeah, to go and I'm going to go start a new job. And- oh, I, yeah. I, did, I, I just went up for vacation. Um, I don't know, a couple months ago. Okay. Uh, and I just to help out on Pinocchio for a little bit, like I was like, oh, oh I want to just see what, what's going on with all the movies up here. And, uh, you know, I did one shot, had some fun and, uh, and did the drive coming home in one shot. I was like, yeah. whatever, 20 hours or, you know, whatever is it, 18 hours or something like that. Yeah. yeah. I, was, I was a potato, a wet <laughs> potato, wet noodle when I got home. <laughs> Okay, so now you've been at Blizzard, uh, you said for how long? About six years. Okay, very cool. Yeah. And I, one of the things I was, as I was preparing for this podcast, I was just thinking about it. We've had uh, uh, Lana, no, yeah, Lana Bazinski. Yeah. We've I'm, had her yeah. on a podcast. We, uh, Chris McCormick, who's one of oh, our oh, alumni. Oh, cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah he, sure. Yeah, we've had him on a podcast. <laughs> yeah, I worked uh, with him. Jeremy Collins, one of our instructors. Oh, Kevin nice. Rucker, one of our instructors. Uh, Casey McDermott. One of our instructors, awesome. and then Brad Fasho, uh, one of our instructors. Oh, so all yeah. I was just looking at that. I'm going. He works at Blizzard. We got a, a whole lot of list Blizzard. of people. Yeah. yeah, we've had here, yeah. and on our podcast. So that's really cool. Yeah. Um, so some of the people you've worked with, I know you're in. Some of these guys are in game. Your yeah. cinematics and in the yeah. game. Uh no. Well, yeah, I guess so. Cinematics does pre-rendered and in game stuff as well, and even the pre-rendered stuff. I mean, sorry, even the in game stuff goes through a pre-rendered process. Uh, meaning like they composite effects in after effects and okay. they render it out through the engine. So it looks like gameplay, but there's a process to it. But you don't um, do any gameplay animation though. No, no. Okay. It's all so, story, yeah. story based. Animation. That's what I was yeah. asking. Yeah. And I know Kevin Rucker and Jeremy Collins are both the in-game animation. So I didn't know if you, yeah. had, if you worked with them at all. Yeah. I, I've, I've had lunch with Jeremy a couple of times, but uh, no, I've never worked on okay. any of the game gotcha. games. Gotcha. Gotcha. Um, so you've been there for seven years, you said all, uh, cinematic type stuff. Yeah. Um, what were some of the things that's a, it looks like a really cool place to work at? You obviously you've been there for long enough here. Best some of the place things... I've ever worked in my is whole it? career. My Why whole is that? career. Oh gosh, a billion reasons. <laughs> I, so, so 25 years, literally working all over, uh, the games industry, TV, film, and they, they treat us with respect as an artist. Mm-hmm. They care about quality, really important. Uh, they uh, have a, you know, it's a cool campus. They got like the variety we get is so awesome. Uh, in, in cinematics, you're dealing with all of the games, gotcha. not just one movie for 18 months or whatever it's going to be. You're like, I'm on Overwatch. I'm on World of Warcraft. I'm on Diablo. I'm on Hearthstone. I'm on blah, 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 <laughs> blah, 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 blah. Like all the games they have, we get to create the stories and the cartoons for it. So, mm. and they're very different styles. Yeah. Yeah. So the Hearthstone get a, was very uh, kind of car- old school Disney yeah. reminiscence of it, you know? Um, and then that's the stuff you did for Shadowlands. Super cool. Oh yeah. Shadowlands. And then there's, oh yeah, dude. And then there's like, you know, the pre-rendered stuff, which is super hardcore VFX. Mm. And uh, and then Overwatch just is so fun and yeah. anime like, and there there there's so much awesome stuff to play with while while you're there as a worker. And most of the shows only last like four months. Okay. So you're jumping to a whole new style about every four months. The variety there, huh? Yeah, yeah. That's and cool. you know, very very talented people. Uh, it's just a just a really rad place to work, man. Nice. Yeah. And I know, um, actually, one of our other alumni, uh, Daniel Klug. Uh-huh. He's over there, isn't he now? I don't know. I I haven't seen him. I you know okay. he's been out of the office. So oh okay not, okay okay yeah yeah he was from he went to Disney and has been there for quite a bit and I think he just 
if I remember correctly, and maybe I'm, I'm wrong, but I'm pretty right. sure he's over there at Blizzard. Um, so it just looks like you guys are doing some really, really cool stuff. I yeah. love the, uh, the cinematics and such. Um, any, anything that you've collaborated with that you've uh, grew in or you've, uh, you know, you've been in it for a while um, mm -hmm. that you're, you're still kind of growing in, I guess. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you're constantly growing as an artist animator, constantly. Every, every time you get a shot, it's something new, typically. Mm -hmm. Uh, but what I'm doing now is I'm directing, uh, which was a huge goal for me in joining Blizzard was okay. like, uh, and you know, the way I directed is I, I kind of got in by doing a couple of stop motion shorts that I created for them, uh, using the Overwatch, uh, characters. Yeah, I did. Uh, yeah. you did it on your own, right? Yeah. Yeah. Me and my wife. Yeah. <laughs> so, and, so uh, cool. So cool. And, and dude, uh, that being able to direct those. Uh-huh it was kind of like proof in the pudding that, Hey, I'm serious. And I really want to do direction, um, allowed them to give me the shot. So this, for this whole last year, I've been just directing the Hearthstone, a couple of three Hearthstone shorts, man, that is awesome. And, uh, so collaborating there is amazing because I'm so used to, to doing uh -huh. being the animator that does. And now I'm sitting there telling the animators what to do. And it's so weird but incredibly cool. I'm, you know, I'm working with storyboard artists. I'm working with the effects artists. I'm working with, com you know, compositors, sounds. You know, we're recording musical stuff, like <laughs> all kinds of really, really uh, collaborative and also really fulfilling, amazing work uh, that I'm, I'm getting to do there. That's awesome, man. Yeah. That is so cool. And, and when are those supposed to be out? Uh, they... You know, I'm not sure, but I think around October, okay, one of them will come out, and then probably next year the other one. Okay. Um, but collaborating with the the other animators mm -hmm. and the other artists, like a lot of that footage you saw of me acting from from uh, uh, any of the stuff we do at Blizzard. Yeah, yeah. A lot of the times, that's not even all my shots. Okay. So a lot of the times, the directors will call us in while they're developing the stories and the shots and we'll actually act it out and with real cameras move okay. around and set up shots and find the real timing of maybe a performance they'll take that live action footage and then put an edit together to give us to inform the directors more of, on what they're looking for uh, before maybe it goes to previs or something like gotcha, that. Gotcha. Gotcha. Yeah. I thought I saw on one of yours and then it said something about animator or somebody yeah. else. I'm like, yeah. okay, so you must be shooting yeah. reference for them. Exactly. So okay. that, like that kind of collaboration happens all the time. Like, uh, you know, not everyone is, I can't act as anything in the world, right? I'm trying as an animator to always improve my acting skills, but there's sometimes a better choice, right? Gotcha. Or you're failing at creating something. So you, you know, go ask someone else to help you. So you're always there. I have key animators that I always go to and mm -hmm. I'm like, Hey dude, can you look at my lip sync? Hey, can you look at this? What do you think of this? Can I get your eyes? You know, you always have your trusted people. Gotcha. And then you are always going to daily. So you're being judged to dailies every day anyways, you know? And that was blizzards. Um, uh, what would you call it? I mean, I guess it'd be cinematics team. Yeah. Is it ran very much like a feature studio type deal with the dailies, things of that nature? Very, okay. I mean, pretty much totally the same. Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah. Okay. Very cool. Um, one of the other things I kind of wanted to hit on because I just thought it was cool. Also, I started putting the pieces together. Uh, I love some of your stop motion with the He-Man. Oh, yeah, dude. <laughs> Dude, so growing up in the 80s, you oh, I just totally, I'm like, it's well, you're like, going to be happy because we're making a new one right now. <laughs> okay. We're making a new one. So like I told you, me and my wife, we just, my family, I should say, my, so another amazing thing, reason I fell in love with stop motion is because all of my artwork used to be on the box uh -huh. and I got really sick and tired of it. And what happened was I said, I'm going to start trying to make this stop motion stuff. I started doing tests with a webcam. And I started sculpting characters. And then my wife's like, you know, let me help you. You got to make a set. I'm going to start making some bricks for you. Okay. So, so she's making hundreds of bricks. Uh -huh. And then she's like, babe, I'll just make the building. You, you just work on the character here. And then my son's like, hey, I'll make a fire hydrant. And then my other son's like, I'll make a dog bowl. And then this, my little two-year-old daughter's like, yeah, I'll make dog food or whatever. <laughs> I'm like, 
And dude, our whole <laughs> world changed. Working together, huh? Everybody was working together, That's making fun, a man. film. And our whole house filled up with artwork. <laughs> That's and cool. So we make we make film. My daughter now, who was two, is now going to art school in England. And she did all the storyboards for the He-Man one you saw. Like, oh, very cool. And she did all the storyboards for the new one. That awesome. We're, we're going to be releasing in a couple of weeks. So man, that is month. killer. We're talking about collaboration. What better way to be able to collaborate with a family on that? That's a, oh, that's man. killer, man. And a dude, and I'm telling you, my wife was not a trained artist at all. And she's amazing. <laughs> she's amazing. You saw that set in the He-Man? Yeah, yeah. She made that. Oh, that is so cool. She made that. My daughter painted the backdrop. Like... It, it's incredible. Oh, and that's we're, fun. We're, yeah, so I love I love T Man too. So being able to apply my stop motion to that license was like something. I've been, <laughs> it's on my bucket list for a long time. Has Hasbro? They're the ones behind. Uh, oh, Mattel. That, right? Mattel. That's, okay. Have they yeah. seen? The, did they make? Oh, any... they loved it. Okay. <laughs> they loved it. Yeah, they loved it. The uh... fans loved it. They it, so many people responded to that piece. It was really special. No, oh, that's neat, man. Yeah. That is too much fun. Would it bring something, you know, uh, decades old to life like that? So New life, I guess. Fun. So fun. Man. <laughs> yeah. Um, any other advice you'd kind of give or, uh, you know, as we kind of close, we've had you on here for a little over an hour, coming up on an hour. Any advice in animation for professionals? <laughs> uh, any advice for, you know, students that as our listeners? Advice. This is so interesting because I, I talk to stop motion people a lot, even though I work in CG and I'm always advising my stop motion students, learn CG. Okay. Learn CG because there's way more jobs. Uh, there's stability because stop motion is very much a circus lifestyle. Okay. You're living in Portland for a while. You go to London, you go to Poland, you go like you're everywhere. And it's like feast or famine in a lot of cases. Um, so that's an easy one. As far as CG animators, I think the main thing that, that I would suggest to you is what I said earlier, which is video reference is an amazing tool, but do not abuse it. Uh, and practice going beyond. If you're gonna use it for everything you do, practice going beyond. Like get, get your information, throw it away, and then push it. All push right. it, play with your timing. Play with it, your exaggeration. Just push it. Very cool. Yeah. Very cool. Well, Justin, again, I know I mentioned at the beginning, but I really just appreciate your time. This has been a lot of fun. And uh, I'd love to get you in again on another podcast another time. Sure. Uh, maybe when the uh, Hearth stuff is uh, wrapped up and we can kind of see some of that and talk with you about the behind the scenes or something. Yeah, of course, man. Anytime you let me know. Awesome. All right. Well, thank you very much. <laughs>